Oh, hey. Hello, Bang community. I'm back to do a recent Vinyl Finds video. And I hope it's not too loud. And that I'm not too loud. And it's been a while. Uh, I know. It's been over a month. Um, yeah, it's going to be a long ass video. I have a lot of stuff to show you because it's been a while. And in the background, I have my jazz collection and my Swedish prog. So now you know I'm in my living room and my record player and speakers are over there. On my record player right now is Pictures Spinning by Jack Jeanette on ECM 1977. Yeah, I've just started playing this, but it's fantastic. Really, really, really like it. Uh, so yeah, Pictures by Jack Jeanette. Uh, cool. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna start off with a story. Um, it's a story uh, of why I haven't been here. Uh, I think it's time for me to say why. I don't know why. You don't have to comment. It's nothing to talk about, really. It's just something that happened. And <laughs> yeah, but I haven't been active in the VC because I haven't been active in life in general. Six months ago, uh, my daughter was born, and uh, it changed my life. As every parent, I guess, over one night, you know. Were they? And uh, I was so thrilled and so happy, and I really emerged in the parenthood thingy. Uh, but when Annie, my daughter, was five weeks old, and this is back in October, her uh, mother decided that she wanted to break up with me and didn't want to be with me anymore. And we've been together for 14 years and almost grew up together. So for me, that was kind of a shocker to say the least, and, and uh, a rough time period started. Uh, we did some therapy, that didn't work um, at all, uh, because, I mean, she has had decided already, and uh, there's a bunch of factors why this happened, I guess, it's 14 years and a kid, I mean, that's not an easy thing to decide for her, and it's not an easy thing for me to accept. But we have managed to get through it and we can talk and communicate today uh, because of Annie. And I, she has moved out and moved on. And I have, uh, we, we are trying to, to uh, split Annie as much as we can. Uh, but I'm working full time, uh, so it's hard for me to, to get 50% of her time, but you know, you know the deal. Uh, yeah, it's hard, but it's working, and that's probably the, the only thing that matters. Uh, so this is back in October, and my life has been rough since, but two months ago I met a, a childhood friend of mine. She uh, has been through the same thing as me, but two years ago, a breakup. Um, and we start talking, exchanging experiences, and one thing led to another. And today we are a couple. Yeah. Uh, she is fantastic. And we've known each other for 25 years, but not in this way. Uh, she's fantastic to me, and she makes me being fantastic to her. And she's fantastic with Annie. And yeah, it's we have so much fun together and it's really working. So crappy times turn to stronger person, turn to better times, and now I'm happier than I've been for a long, long time. During this time I didn't buy records, I didn't play records, I didn't listen to music, watch movies, series, read books, did any whole cooking, I went down depression, weight, <laughs> you know, the, the whole deal, didn't meet friends, uh, didn't live at home, um, but all that has, has come back the last two months. I'm starting to enjoy records again, uh, starting to listen to a lot of music and enjoy my collection, going to record fairs, uh, reading, watching movies, cooking together, doing trips, uh, Vacation, small vacations and and enjoying each other and enjoying friends, old friends, new friends. Uh, so yeah, uh, quite quite the adventure. So 
fucking hell, enjoy life because you never know when it's getting turned upside down really, really fast. So, records. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm going to start with some good ones, then some mediocre ones, and, and then the best ones in last. So, you have to watch this kind of 20, 30 minute video, okay? Uh, first of all, the second installment of the compilation that Robert Wyatt released, uh, different every time. Benning Dictatorships, two LP set, Gatefold, and he's doing stuff with John Lindström, Anja Garbeck, Hot Chip, Björk, Nick Mason, Phil Manzanera, and the shipbuilding song he did with Elvis Costello. Really, really good. And the only things that I need in my Wyatt collection, I, I think, I'm gonna get Matching Mold, the two, two Matching Mold records, but not solo stuff. Maybe Bottoms Up. Ah, we have to see. The High and Mighty Hawk by the Coleman Hawkins Quintet. On, on MGR records, and here's uh, Buck Clayton, Hank Jones, Ray Brown, and, and Mick Sheen on this one. And it, good old jazz, standard jazz, like uh, saxophone based. Yeah, good one. I have to play it again, but yeah, good one. A keeper. This was a surprise. I've had this for maybe nine, ten months, but never played it because on paper it's so damn boring. Uh, so I, I just I didn't play it. On the nearest quartet, Evergreens uh, from Arcana. Uh, bought this for a buck on a thrift store here in my town. And you have on the nearest, of course, Bengt Hallberg, Rune Gustafsson, and Georg Riedel. So the cream of the crap of the Swedish jazz mafia, 1980, 82 in this case. And he's doing like Christian hymns and songs, like a project <clears throat> um, with these guys, and it's fantastic. Sound quality, amazing, amazing sound quality. This is like Dr. Deadwax kind of amazing uh, sound quality stuff. Uh, Blot and Dog and Trigger Ekening and War on the B side, the second and third song is just, just to die for. All you Swedish guys knows about these songs because we, grow, we grew up with them, but you've never heard them in this constellation. Fantastic, beautiful, I'm so glad that I finally listened to it. Highly recommend. Stanley Turing, Don't Miss with Mr. T, 1975 on CTI Records. You have Ron Carter on bass, uh, you have uh, Eric Gale on guitar and you have your Pharrell on tenor saxophone. So that's why I, I paid a buck or two for this. Um, but it's it's uh, Rudy Van Gelder who engineered it and it sounds fantastic and it's good old yes, I mean good jazz from that time period, CTI, typical CTI. Um, so yeah, for a buck or two, get it. Uh, I don't know what to say. It's a keeper. Anthony Braxton, uh, this time on Actuel, number 47, 1970, a trio record, uh, Gatefold, I won't show you the Gatefold, it's an original. Uh, so I'm glad I have another Actuel, I'll try to buy them if I see them cheap, I think. Uh, so yeah, but Anthony Braxton, interesting, every, every record I've heard by him is at least interesting if you have the time to really sit down and listen to it. Okay, a VC trade, and thank you so much, Kevin, for this. Dr. Strangely Strange, we uh, talked a little bit when I said that I still need Casadega, the Bright Eyes record, and he said that he had it and didn't listen to it, so we did a trade kind of thing. I got this and another one as a surprise record. I can't show that because I haven't listened to it myself, so you have to wait until the next time, but I can say that Bright Eyes Casadega is probably my, my favorite Casadega record, actually. Uh, Awesome, uh, awesome kind of cover artwork where you take this kind of Ouija mirror thing and drag along and you get the artwork in behind the artwork. Uh, yeah, Google, <laughs> Google it. Uh, thank you so much, Kevin. I have two records that you wanted that I'm sending you and I'm sending a, a, a bonus one. That bonus one is released on Record Store Day, so you have to wait until that, but I'll promise you it will be worth the wait because it's one of the best records ever recorded in Sweden. Finally reissued. Uh, I'm getting one and I'm getting one for you. Phil Oaks in concert, uh, a, a singer-songwriter, political singer-songwriter from 1966 on the Gold Electra label. Original that you can find for next to nothing. I, I paid too much for this, but it's like nine, 
nine bucks, but it's it's so so damn worth it. Um, yeah, and the song changes that everyone knows and loves. All you Swedish guys out there, Cornelius Vresvik, Tio Vakaviso, on Okpersonlia Passon, one of the best Swedish records ever recorded, but in Swedish, so you you English talking guys maybe won't appreciate this as much. But Sabu Martinez are playing uh, uh, congas and ma maracas on this one, and Rune Gustafsson is playing guitar, so maybe, I don't know, 1968 on Metronome Studios. Uh, I, I talked with Anders about this, and we said that this may be the best B-side ever recorded in Sweden, maybe. The B-side is just fantastic. There's not a single uh, bad song. Som jag kommer ta sig skor, för jag gör Tom Tobros, Saskia och Personliga Präsen. I mean, just a fantastic lineup of songs. Uh, <clears throat> this new uh, girl that I'm seeing, she has a friend who who recorded a, a record and put out only on, on vinyl. Daniel uh, Sangenbjerg, October Falls, pressed in 100 copies. There he is. A singer songwriter, sounds a little bit like uh, the singer in Green Day, <clears throat> but more in the same vein as Tallest Man on Earth or, or uh, Jens Lekman. And those kind of Swedish uh, singer songwriter guys, really, really good. And he's building guitars in my town also. So, uh, <clears throat> interesting dude to. to to listen to. <clears throat> Pause this picture now, take the, the name and put it in uh, Spotify because it's there if you want to sample it. There's still copies left, a few, uh, so get it while you can, if you want it. Maybe the best release of the year, probably the best release of the year, is Subliminal Sounds release of Ali Elianas Trägård. This Fantastic, fantastic, uh, sought after Swedish pro record from 1970, I think. Uh, and what they did was they put this out on a gatefold. It's not gatefold uh, originally. It's <coughs> produced on a vinyl record with the original uh, artwork on the labels. And in my case, I took the purple one uh, because it's limited to 300 copies. Um, but they they took this from the the original master tapes, so it's killer uh, sound quality. It comes with a booklet with pictures, stories about the band in English and stuff like that. But also, and this is the best part, a bonus disc. Uh, the second LP is outtakes live. Uh, cuts and stuff that no one has ever heard before that they hunted down and it's just that disc is worth paying like 45 50 bucks that they charge for this it's expensive but it's so damn worth it purple 300 copies black one 700 copies and they will sell out believe me maybe the release of the year if not in many years yeah get it a lot of you guys need that. I mean, a lot of you guys. Fred, Chris, Chris. Yeah, I, I mean, just I just name a few of you. Uh, yeah, Random Access Memories. Finally got this for like nine bucks uh, on sale, and I only got it because it sounds good and I like. Or, yeah, I love Instant Crush. That song. It's a. It's a perfect pop song in my opinion and uh, when I was drunk last year I said to a friend that I think that that's, that song is the best song that came out on radio uh, in the past 10 years uh, I don't know if I think that still but it's a good song really good song love it mm. okay Pelle Miljona Oi uh, Recommended by, by Miko in one of his videos. Really, really good. Um, new wavy kind of punk Finnish record. And you have Dreyer's uh, uh, Jean d'Arc there on the label. So that's also cool. 2011 reissue uh, of this 80 record. Great. Thank you so much, Miko, for the recommendation. Two more to go. <clears throat> and a record. Two, two, three. Yeah. I need to speed this up. I'm sorry. I need to eat. Samla mamma's manna, klossa knappitatet, 
their, their third release on Silent Re Silence Record, I think. Instrumental prog from Sweden, mid 70s, with Costa Petria as the main figure. He played with uh, a lot of people, but Jukka Tolonen and uh, Samma Mamma's Mamma, uh, yeah, he played with Fred Fritt also, or they did. Uh, Samma Mamma's Mamma is like almost a um, Sapa esque Swedish instrumental prog band. Uh, circus music sometimes, Nordic prog sometimes, fantastic always. Uh, yeah, glad I found it for a great price. And now, the Piste de la Résistance, uh, the record that I've wanted for the longest of times, and I'm so glad I finally have it. It's the record I've paid the most for, uh, but I got it cheap, so or cheaper than I thought I would. Um, yeah, ask Anders, he knows. For years I've been looking for Pop Workshop Volume 2, and I finally have it in my collection, in mint, almost, like near mint condition. Uh, perfect, perfect copy of this fantastic record. Pop Workshop is uh, Spinev Nimenslowski, Vlodek Gulgowski, the, the top two Polish uh, jazz musicians, Janne Schaffer, uh, the, the Swedish guitarist, Mats Winding on Fender bass, I think he's Danish, uh, and you have Tony Williams on drums. Yes, the Miles Davis drummer, the uh, Tony Williams lifetime drummer. Uh, Tony Williams. He went to Sweden to record this record and they wanted Billy Cobham but they got Tony Williams. He's playing some of the best drums I've ever heard him play on this one and together with two po Polish guys and Janusz Schaffer's guitar it's just a fantastic piece of his music history uh, that I'm holding in my hand. The artwork is fantastic, the music is fantastic and I'm so glad I have it. It's said that when Lodi Kulkuski, also the producer, uh, went to the airport with, with uh, uh, Tony, uh, Tony Williams, he asked for his autograph and he scrapped it down on a piece of paper. Now, Tony had heard that, it, that they wanted uh, uh, Billy Cobham but had to settle for Tony Williams. So when Lodek later looked at the autograph that he got, it said Billy Cobham. Uh, so Tony Williams wrote Billy Cobham and he was pissed and you can li hear that I read in uh, Janne Schaffer's, uh, Jan Schaffer's, Janne Schaffer's <laughs> självbiografi that you can hear on the record that Tony Williams are pissed on some of the tracks that, that he put out because he thought that he was a better drummer than Billy Cobham obviously and, and wasn't satisfied being second place you know. 18 minutes. I'm so sorry uh, to have taken too much of your time. I hope it was worth it. And please comment if you like. Have a great day, everyone. Everyone. Bye.